the book of Job. Today we will look at a special chapter in the book of Job, uh, chapter 28. Chapter 28 is uh, a little bit different than uh, what we've seen so far, because as you remember, uh, most of the chapters in the book of Job are part of a dialogue between Job and his friends. But chapter 3 was kind of separate because it was a lament by Job. And now we have this chapter 28, which some people question who is the author of this book, uh, of this chapter. I personally think that it, uh, is, uh, it belongs to Job himself, but at the same time can be understood as an interlude in which maybe, maybe God speaks. In any case, uh, it's less uh, relevant who is speaking the chapter. Again, I think the highest probability is that it belongs to Job. More important is, however, the content. And uh, the contact, uh, as you can see, it uh, has to do with wisdom. It's about where can we find wisdom. And some of you remember that the book of Proverbs starts with the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, while uh, the book of Ecclesiastes ends with a similar uh, expression. This is wisdom, you know, to, to fear the Lord and keep the commandments. Now in the book of Job, which is also a wisdom book, and this chapter definitely helps to define it as the wisdom book. Now, uh, this uh, chapter 28, it, it makes it even more probable and more uh, convincing that we should classify the book of Job as a wisdom book. But let's look at this chapter and let's look a little bit at the Hebrew. And I will try to point out some things that you should look at a little bit deeper and uh, maybe include in your journaling. So the, the chapter starts like this. Ki yesh la kesef moza u makom le zahav yazokum. Now the first part is fairly simple because there is existential existential particle. There is two. There is two. It's in one way to express possession. It could have been done even without yesh. It could have been ki le kesef. But probably because of the meter, they included the yesh. Don't forget that in poetry, the poet tries to be as brief as possible. Brevity is a characteristic of Hebrew poetry. But here uh, we have ki yesh la, because there is for silver moza. And moza is usually understood to be a place from where it comes out, because notice the, it comes from the verb yatza. And most translators, you can see a mine. Uh, the Sturgeon just says topos, a place. But I think a better character, uh, a better translation is a mine, a place from where silver comes out. So there is a place for the mine. There is a there is a mine for the silver, and a place and a place for. There is a place for gold. So we have silver and gold. What most of us want, right? No. Not uh, really, because wisdom, of course, is more precious than silver and gold, the Proverbs told us. So it says, there is a place for silver, a mine for silver, and there is a place for gold. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. Yazoku. Yazoku. Again, I underline for you the verbal root, but again, the verbal root here is actually zakak. Most people understand it's zakak, but notice it's a term masculine plural. Usually, this is understood. There is a place for silver, for gold, they refine it, they blow it kind of, they refine it, zakak, probably, literally, to blow. But this cannot be understood, and many times it's translated when it's a plural, they do something, it's, a, it's translated as a passive, where it is refined. And notice, for example, I like very much the translation uh, of the New King James Version, in a place where where, but this where is missing, again, uh, we would probably put let's have a share, or where, uh, or where, umakum let's have a share, yazakoku, where, actually, maybe not a share is the best place, I'm not exactly sure what we would put, but, but where has to be supplied, you know, notice here, whence it comes, and a place whence it is refined, so it has to be, to be uh, provided. So there is a place. So basically, or we can say like this, silver has a place, has a mine, and 
Shen's gold has a place where they refine it, literally, where it is refined. So we so we're looking at the silver. But now the question is Barzel. Now we're moving to iron and we're moving to bronze. So we had silver and gold in the previous, now we're moving to iron and gold. So it says about iron, meafar yukach. Iron from from the dust or from the earth. Dust is literal, but it can also be from the earth. Yukach. Yukach is a little bit debated, but there's no doubt that it's from the verb lakach, to take. And it could be understood either as a hofal or, for example, some people take it as a cal passive. A cal passive, again, that would be an imperfect cal passive. So basically, uh, from, uh, so iron is taken from the dust. And that's how most translate, but notice, notice uh, uh, the Septuagint comes out of the earth. But notice how the translation is taken, is taken. Usually they go with the whole file, with the passive. I think that's probably a better understanding. So iron is taken from the dust and a then and a stone, nechusha, bronze. Now this, is, this introduces another problem, yatsuk. And uh, Yatsuk can be understood from brief from Tsuk, uh, number, the number two definition of Tsuk. I have it for you here, Tsuk. And then it's poured out. So then that would be, it would be poured out. It would be an imperfect Yatsuk Kal. So then, then it would be like, kind of like the copper is poured out from stone stone here with the meaning not just regular stone by ore so that's how some take it and copper is smelted or is poured out from the ore or and or we can translate it more literally and we can take this together evenyatsuk evenyatsuk like a smelted and a smelted uh, a smelted um, uh, stone is basically the bronze. Bronze comes from the smelter stone. Uh, notice here, brass is molten out of the stone, usually, or, or notice here the New Jerusalem Bible, smelted rocks yield copper. So then they take it together. Even Yatsuk would take it as a stone which is smelted, kind of gives us copper. Again, gives us, gives us, it's implied. And, uh, shows us again the brevity of the of the passage in, in any case uh, notice there are some difficulties with especially with this verb and the understand the exact understanding of this this is actually not that difficult the lakach it's just a question about whether it's a whole follower cal passive that's more of a grammatical uh, this is a little bit more disputed but the meaning is still clear uh, both the silver and the gold and also the iron and the bronze are coming from the dust and are coming in this case from smelted rock or from the ore. So uh, notice here, dorm takes this yatsuk as a passive participle from the verb yatsak. So then it would be, so then becomes a hard stone becomes copper, right? A hard stone, even yatsuk, nechusha, even yatsuk, like a, like a hard stone or a melted stone, a melted stone becomes copper. Uh, and now it continues. Kate's sum la choshek u la kol taklit hu choker even ofel betzalmavet. Kate's sum. Kate simply means like a like an end. He puts. He put again. It's a perfect sum from sim. He put, but notice in the poetry and in, and, and in the wisdom literature, many times the perfect is, un, is translated with the present. So he puts an end to the darkness and to all, taklit is usually understood, to all ex, uh, extremity. To the farthest extremity, he searches, this is simply an active participle from Hekar, he searches again for stone or for ore ofel vetzalmavet now ofel vetzalmavet these are two words that describe darkness tzalmavet 
many of us are familiar with from Psalm 23, we usually understand, we usually translate the shadow of death, but it can also be, un, be translated as deep darkness, like darkness, like, like the death, and Ophel. The question is, how do we feed this together? So let's see how the, some of the translation go. <laughs> so he has set a bound to darkness. He has set a bound to darkness. That's interesting. He set an end to darkness or a bound to darkness. And he searches, he searches out every limit, every limit. A stone is darkness and the shadow of death. And then just kind of takes this separately. A stone is, provides the verb to be, darkness and the shadow of death. That's how the Septuagint translates. But let's look at the newer translation. A minor puts an end to the darkness. Minor is implied. Or a man. Again, uh, there's no man here, as you can see. There's no minor, but it's imp it's it's a, it's implied that he, he the man, the minor, the people who are working either looking for silver or for gold, or we saw iron or 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 bronze, or copper probably better. Uh, they they he seeks he puts an end to the darkness. He probes the deepest recesses. Again, another translation for taklit, for ore, in the gloomy darkness. So in that case, uh, CSB takes these together. Ophel Vatsamavet takes them together, kind of describing gloomy darkness, very deep darkness, takes them together. Others separated in gloom and deep darkness. So notice you can take that together. Just like in Greek, sometimes the chi uh, kind of uh, invites you to take them together. And same here with Vav. Uh, in any case, again, the meaning is fairly uh, fairly understood. You know, the, this man, this this in, innovative man, does everything he can to reach out to the deepest, to the darkest places of the earth. You know, to kind of to find what he wants, to find this ore. Heaven here, I would I would go with heaven uh, with the meaning of ore, like uh, like most people notice, farthest limit the ore in gloom. Uh, Let's look at the New Jerusalem Bible. Man makes an end of darkness to the outmost limit. Again, taklit, extremity. To the outmost limit, he digs. He digs or he seeks for. Chakar, yeah. It's certainly also to dig, to search. He seeks, he digs. Digs probably fits better here. The black rock in shadow dark as death. The black rock. So he takes it, uh, he takes it there together. He seeks, he digs for, even of hell. We can take it together to the dark rock, to the black rock. Uh, in, again, in is implied. In is implied. Uh, in shadow dark as that. Of course, as always, it's good to check out the Young Literal translation. And uh, this gives you a better idea about the Hebrew. An end he had set to darkness. And to all perfection, I will not translate this perfection, he is searching a stone of darkness and death shade. So he's searching, uh, you know, for something, again, takes this together, a stone of darkness and death shade. Again, a shadow of death. Perhaps all of these, I would go probably better with the ESV translation. In this case, it may be the CSB. Man puts an end to darkness and searches out the farthest limit, the ore, and uh, the ore in gloom and deep darkness. So he's looking for this ore. He's looking for this gold, silver, iron, or, or copper. He's looking it in the deepest darkness uh, for this ore. That, that's where it's found in the darkness. It shows again the how uh, how resourceful a human being is in his search for 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 uh, things in the ground for silver for gold for iron and bronze paratz nachal this is one of the most difficult verses in this particular chapter paratz nachal literally you know he he burst through he burst through a nachal a nachal is uh, like a wadi kind of like a, like a, like a stream Meimgar. This is extremely difficult to translate. So literally, let's look again at the literal translation of Young. 
a stream he had broken out. Peretz, perhaps you remember the name of Peretz. It's one of the signs of Judah, you know, to, to burst through. So he burst through a stream. But then notice here, it's min, min im, from with, from with gar. Literally this from with gar. Gar is a sojourner, a traveler in this case. So let's see how wild we... So a stream had broken out from a sojourner, and then ha nishkachim. Again, this is from the verb shakach to uh, forget, and we have the participle nifal. So the ones forgotten mini regel. Again, this is simply from from foot. The ones forgotten from foot. So again, as you notice, this expression is extremely difficult, and we will see that there are very translation. So uh, uh, these guys are doing something. Dalu me'enosh na'u. So we have to see what's this uh, verb, dalu, and we'll see that most say it's from dalal, and na'u from nu, and it's clearly perfect, third masculine plurals. So they do something, me'enosh. Here, from men, away from men. So maybe we can understand this away from men, away from sojourners. So, something, uh, so of course, I think the image here is the image of people digging in mines. As you know, many times the mines are very far away from uh, places. Uh, a few mines that I'm thinking about are, of course, the mines of Timna in uh, ancient Israel or. Um, or even the mines in Jordan, close to uh, in the land of Edom. Like if you go there, you can you can still visit now. There are actually a few of them are being excavated. They're really kind of far away from uh, the major cities. They're somewhere in the desert. So I think this is the image here. You know that they are kind of uh, they are cutting channels. They are digging channels away from travelers, away from uh, from people. For, from people, you know, they're, they're somewhere isolated in, in, in the desert, in wilderness, where they're digging in the mines. But then the, the, these words are really difficult to translate. So, dalu, just based on uh, this verb dalal, and it appears in Proverbs 26, it seems to be dangle. So, the idea that they are dangling, and most translate this, they are swinging to and fro. The idea is of people mining in the, in the old days in antiquity, mining by using ropes and probably lowering themselves with ropes and dangling and trying to dig obviously at that time they didn't have those um, those smaller trains that you have when you go into the mines so uh, they are suspended far away from people notice the, the septuagint otherwise septuagint is difficult to understand these translations uh, uh, it's just difficult to understand that it's possible that it may have a slightly different text, but let's look at the ESV. He opened shafts in the valley away, interpretative, from where anyone lives, so from any sojourners. They are forgotten by travelers, so you know, they are forgotten, the ones forgotten from the from foot, literally, so he translates from travelers. They hang in the air, they start in the air, they hang in the air. Far away from mankind, may and orsh. So again, very inter inter interpretative. And the, then they understand nau from nua. They swing to and fro. And uh, this is a typical translation. This will go to like New Jerusalem by the foreigners, boring to rabbis in unfrequented places, swinging suspended far from human beings. So you have various translations, again, uh, which show the difficulty of the text. However, again, I think the meaning is fairly clear. It's all these people, these innovative people, these resourceful human beings who are far away from anybody. They are somewhere in the mines and they are just trying to, to cut, to open shafts in the valleys. Here, notice the flood breaketh, like Nahal seeing as a, as a flood or boring into the ravines, they bore into ravines. A stream had broken. Uh, I think, again, the idea is uh, of, of channels probably broken for, uh, for mining, 
far away from people and probably with the whole help of the ropes. But let's let's look further and see if we can understand it even better. Eretz mimena yeite lechem. So here is just talking about the land, the earth. From it comes out the bread. And under in it, under it, tachtecha, under it, under the, the earth, is turned, hafach is to turn, but this is a, this is a nifal, is turned, kamo like, this is just translated just like, kamo like fire, is turned up as a fire. So basically this is what is happening in the earth, in the earth from which our bread, our food comes. Under it, uh, something is turned out. Uh, it's been turned out like a fire. Uh, so, so notice some of the translations for the earth. Out of it comes bread, but underneath it, it is turned up, is by fire. So it's turned up, uh, and probably also making allusion to the fire that is used in the mining, and probably was used, of course, also at that time, especially for melting the ore. So and it continues. Makom safir avaneha vafrot zahav lo. Notice again lo uh, preposition lo being used for possession. Zahav lo basically has gold. Let's let's see if the place of sapphire. Where I noticed the the word sapir. That's where we get our word sapphire. So makom. So literally, its stone, its stones, its stones or its rocks are the place of the sapphire. Its stones, the stones of the earth that we saw that it's turned up. So its stones are the place of sapphires. Vafrot, afrot literally, it's, it's, and, and dust, and the dust, the dust of gold, lo. Uh, are in it, are in it. Now it's interesting because usually, uh, usually, as we see, uh, as we see, uh, Earth is a feminine, like we have it here. So why is it here masculine? So let's see how uh, how the young literal makes sense of this. A place of the sapphire are its stones, and it had dust of gold. So uh, it's interesting because this is feminine and this is this is masculine. It doesn't show the difference in the young literal translation, which usually takes that into consideration. Let's look at the New Jerusalem Bible. There, the rocks have veins of sapphire, and their dust contains gold. So notice dust, zahavlo, the dust of the earth, the dust of the earth, zahavlo. Uh, has uh, has gold. Again, it's a little bit hard to understand this law. I wanted ha, it's dust. But uh, still, the, the 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 translation agreed that uh, that um, we are talking about here stones and uh, gold that is available, sapphire that is available again in the dust of the earth and in the stones of the earth. Now, if we go a little bit first, Nativ lo yadao ait velo shazafatu ein aya. Nativ, literally, a path, lo yadao, he does not know it, who, ait. So here, ait most translated as the bird of praise. The bird of praise does not know it, does not know it, does not know it the path does not know the path to it so no bird no bird of prey knows the path knows its path so in other words the birds have no access to those uh, to the ore that the human beings are are searching for and ein aya the eye of the black kite or the eye of the falcon some say or some say the vulture it's one of the animals from that category, you know, the falcon, the vulture. And I realize there might be a different biological uh, species, but still, uh, that's how most people understand. Perhaps it's the black kite. And the eye of the black kite do not see it. Again, uh, for your journal, why don't you try to 
search to see how you parse this particular verb because this is a little bit difficult here if you look at it. The verb does seem to be shazaf. Shazaf. It's a very rare verb. Uh, notice here shazaf. To catch sight of Job, of the eyes. So, uh, but try to see how is this parsed? What's the reason? Because notice here is the eye of the kite does not see it does not see it so how is this uh, to be understood as see it where is it is that just simply provided let's look at young literary translation a path not known it had a ravenous fowl ravenous fowl referring of course to bird of prey most people understand that as a bird of prey the eyed the eyed the bird of prey nor scorched it had an eye of the kite nor scorched it had that's very inter interesting but most most people understand to catch a sight of it i think this is the best to catch sight of it or to see it if you want to go a little bit which is a more common verb to see but uh, again that the idea is uh, understandable so the place where these people are, are are mining and they're swinging to and fro they're going down on ropes it's a place where the animals even the animals of prey and the falcons who are flying high up, they don't have access there, right? And then it, it continues and says, Lo hidrihuhu b'nei shachat, literally here the sons, the sons of pride, maybe the proud beast, some subtranslate the proud beast, literally the sons of pride do not, and this is in, you probably noticed this uh, triliteral, this, this, uh, three um, constants from derech road here is a he feel they do not tread on it they do not tread on it the, the wild beast the the proud beast let's translate the proud beast do not tread on it and lo ada alav shachal here is the lion the lion does not walk upon it ada it's interesting, Ada appears in Aramaic and appears actually in Syriac too. Very rare verb uh, here, very rare in, uh, in Hebrew. In fact, you can check it out. It's, it might be a hapax. In any case, it's very rare. But the meaning is the lion does not walk upon it. Again, what it's trying to show us here is the inaccessibility. Inaccessibility of the gold and the silver and the ore that human beings search for and dig for. So notice here, proud beasts never walked on it. No lion has ever prowled over it. So it's interesting, the, the addition of the ever. I think, uh, I think it's, it's, it's obviously, it's, it's supplied because it's not there, but I think uh, uh, it carries, uh, I think that is the force of the, of the Hebrew. It can be translated like that. I think that that's an appropriate translation to show that it's an inaccessible place. The proud beast never, never stepped on it. Even the fierce lion, some translate shachal is the fierce lion. But anyway, it's usually just the lion uh, did not pass over it, did not walk over it. Ada can be to walk over or to, to pass over. So they did not do that. And, b'chalmi shalach yado hafak mishoresh harim, this is not a problem, just notice the chali, chalamish is the flint. So pay attention to that. And then, uh, so just do that yourself. Here again, there's no major problem. Just here, here probably you should know that yeorim refers to yeor. It's again, it's usually it's understood as a stream, as a stream. And then uh, I will stop here with verse 11 because this is one that i want you to to research so please trust uh, research this because this is questionable and it's difficult but not notice here from naharot naharot it's easy rivers so he dams he binds up habash is to bind up but here in this context he dams rivers but this this is the questionable one mi bachi mi bachi what is this v taluma 
So this is understood usually something that is hidden. He brings out to light. He brings out to light. Again, it would have been nice if he was le or, but le is not so bright. Or, of course, means light. Yatsa is the verb yatsa to go out, and this is the he field yotsi. So he brings, he brings out to light that which is hidden, that which is hidden, he brings out to light. But here is just unclear what this particular phrase is. Is this mean plus baki? Or is this something else and has to be uh, revocalized? So please uh, make sure you consult some uh, technical commentaries and try to understand exactly what this means. But uh, let's look at the translation. He dams up the streams so they do not trickle. So they do not trickle. This is a translation of this. Or uh, from flowing, from flowing here. Uh, let's look at the Septuagint. He has laid bare the depths of the rivers. So he has laid bare the depths of the rivers. Hmm, that, that is interesting. And he has brought his power to light. He brought to light his power. Now, now this is completely different translation than the rest. So uh, clearly either the Septuagint has a different text, slightly different text. So it may be a little bit different or just uh, perhaps uh, just to understand this from a different verb but most understand this verb from alam to be hidden to hide so notice here he dams up the streams from flowing translating this from flowing but where do they get it from so this is something that you must look at and uh, what is hidden he brings out to light or he explores the sources of rivers, interesting, bringing hidden things to light. So you, as you can see from the translation, they're, uh, they're having problem with this particular expression. Uh, so this is how the first part ends. And then uh, we have this question, and this is a very difficult question, a very, very important question for the, for the passage, and we will end it here. But wisdom, I think most people understand that, but wisdom may ayen tinsa. May I translate it where, not from where, but really where can it be found? Or where is it found? This is, of course, a nifal from Matzah. But wisdom, where can it be found? And where, again, another way to say where, uh, a, z, where is this the place of understanding? Now, this is the question. This is the leading question for this passage. But wisdom, where can it be found? And where is the place to understand? This is, of course, a fairly easy, easy uh, verse to translate. Just be aware again that the imperfect can be translated. Where will it be found? But also, where can it be found? And most go with can. You know, many go with can. Uh, some go with shell. But uh, still, again, the meaning I think is. Uh, is, uh, is clear, where can we find the wisdom? Where can we get the understanding? This is the question, the leading question of this passage. So I'll end here and I will then uh, work on the second part in the next lecture.